Stitchers, this is Beth at West Coast Wool. In today's video tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about how to use freezer paper to transfer your pattern pieces. And this sample today is my pair study pattern, and we're going to trace some pairs and we're going to cut them out. So stay tuned. There are several different kinds of freezer paper that you can purchase to transfer your pattern pieces onto. This is Reynolds freezer paper. It comes in a roll you can buy at the grocery store. It's got a plastic coating on the back and a dull side on the front for tracing. There's also uh, freezer paper sheets that you can purchase that you can put them through your inkjet printer if you need to transfer a lot of pattern pieces. You can do that. And also there is a really stiff um, freezer paper. I'm not really sure who the brand, what the brand is with this one, but it's, it's almost like a card stock and you can get those. But for me personally, I use the Reynolds freezer paper the most because it's inexpensive and I do so much tracing. I use it for lots of craft things, but I really like it. So what it looks like, it's just a plain paper that you can trace through. It's got a plastic coating, and so it's got a shiny side that we're gonna use to press on our wool. And then we're gonna trace, we're gonna trace this on the front and then we're gonna press it on the back. I usually use a pencil, just an, a plain ordinary pencil to trace my pattern pieces on because I like to erase any mistakes that I make. But you can also use a ballpoint pen, you can use a Sharpie, but one thing you don't want to use that I want to just point out is the friction pen. You don't want to use a friction pen, and the reason why is because when we press our pattern piece on wool with your iron, the friction pen will disappear. The lines will disappear and it'll make you very sad because you've traced everything for nothing. So try to avoid this. Use a, a pen or a pencil. So now I have my pattern piece here and I have just, a, I just cut a piece of freezer paper and I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my pattern, my freezer paper on my pattern and then I'm just going to trace and we're just going to trace around my design just like this. Okay. And then you're going to use your paper scissors and you just want to cut about an eighth of an inch beyond the line that you just traced. So this is what we're going to do. Okay. And now we're ready to press our pattern piece on our wool. So we're going to take this over to the iron and give it a press. Okay. I have my piece of wool here. I've got my pattern piece and all I'm going to do is place the shiny side down on top of the wool, the dull side on top, and I'm going to give it a press. Now one thing to keep in mind is you don't want to put your pattern pieces dead center in your piece of wool because you want to conserve as much as possible for other projects or another part of your uh, piece that you might be using in your pattern. So I'm going to move it down just like this and I'm going to use my iron and I'm going to give it a press. And you can see where the sticky side has stuck to the wool. And now we're ready to cut it out. So before we do that, I just want to talk to you a little bit about scissors. I personally like to use a I think these are about four inch curved Fisker scissors. They're not very expensive, but I've used them for years and years and I personally like them. And uh, when I'm cutting out small pieces and some circles, I like to have the curve. They're great and I do recommend them. If I'm cutting out a bigger piece, these Karen K Buckley scissors are great. They're serrated and they feel really good in your hands. It's got nice, a nice rubber handle and they're great for cutting a little bit bigger pieces. But I know everybody has their favorite kind of scissors. These are just some of mine. 
Um, but you can use whichever, you know, whatever scissors you like. Okay, so we're gonna cut this out and I'm gonna cut through the paper and the wool. Now, some people will say you're gonna dull your scissors by cutting through the paper. I've cut so many pieces from these scissors and they work great for me. Now, you can also cut on the line, but let's just kind of take it through how I cut my pieces out. So we're gonna just cut around. Okay, so I've cut my pair out. And then all you need to do is peel the paper off and you've got your perfectly cut pair. Now you can use the freezer paper more than once. It, it sticks several times. And so the, so the next one, you might wanna just press it down. So, so I've, what I've done is I've, I've already pressed one here. And then you can take your scissors and just cut around the template. Okay, just like this. Okay. I do want to mention that I've had a couple people ask me if there's a right or a wrong side to your wool. Which side of the wool should you press your pattern piece on? In most cases, there, there's no uh, right or wrong side necessarily. There might be a side that has a prettier uh, hand-dyed modeling that you might want to use. And let me see if I can show you. It, the color changes might move around um, from side to side, but there really isn't a right or wrong side. So you can choose the side that you want, but there is an exception. This really great diamond pattern wool has a little bit different side to it. So you can decide which you would like. If you want it more pronounced, you could use it on this side. If you want it less pronounced, you could use it on this side. So. This is the exception, but most of the time there isn't a right or wrong side. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends, and keep it wooly.